Hello everyone, welcome to another Star Wars Old Republic video and for this video we're going to be going through the changes that are going to be coming in patch 5.0. Now these are official changes posted on the dev tracker and I did do a video um, a couple of months ago that talked about some of the data mine class changes. Now that was a really comprehensive list and all of the changes that were indicated in the data mining aren't actually talked about here. But the fact of the matter is this video is going to deal with the official changes that are 100% sure going to be coming to the classes and most of them just deal with some of the new legendary uh, tiers that um, legendary utilities that are going to be coming to the classes and then a few new abilities that are coming to only few classes but we'll get into that later uh, one thing I want to quickly mention is I will only be dealing with the Empire classes because those are the ones I'm most familiar with so I actually know what the abilities mean and stuff and for those of you who play Republic classes well the classes are just mirror one another so um, you guys can probably extrapolate the information based upon uh, the Empire stuff so let's get right into the um, operative so for the Imperial agent what they said was the operatives are going to have some new tricks and under the right circumstances these new skills and abilities can give operatives the tactical advantage and make them a really dangerous opponent on the battlefield. So some of the new changes that are coming is firstly Toxic Haze. Now this is a new ability for all operatives. It allows you to execute your, tacti your tactical advantage to drop a canister at your feet which will do persistent AoE damage for 6 seconds. The medicine discipline will be able to use this ability from up to 30 meters away. And then the second one is Take Cover, Crouch and Snipe have all been removed from the um, operatives and now they're going to be sniper exclusive. Now this is a general trend that you'll see throughout most of the, of the class changes that are coming with patch 5.0 which is that they're going to be taking away you know, all the ranged abilities from melee classes and making them purely melee and as you guys could see uh, that trend is obvious with the new ability Toxic Haze which will place a AoE thing at your feet so it's basically a really me um, melee heavy ability and you're going to need to be in close range to your enemies in order for that ability to take effect and then um, you know ranged abilities like cover, crouch and snipe those are being removed and those are just being given to the sniper. Now each advanced class is going to be receiving three new legendary utilities and all of these legendary utilities are really awesome but let's get right into the operative ones. So the first legendary utility is Mobile Strategies. This allows your exfiltrate to grant a charge of Mobile Strategies, reducing the energy cost of your next overload shot by 100%, allowing it to be used at 30 meters and making it knock the target back. Each use of overload shot consumes a charge of Mobile Strategies and grants 10 energy. Now overload shot is probably one of the least used abilities by operatives, at least when I read the rotation guides online and all the guides, none of them tell you to use overload shot because whether your concealment, maybe more so when you're lethality, but especially when you're concealment operatives, you're too busy using all of your other abilities. So this legendary utility will definitely make overload shot very powerful and it can be used in numerous circumstances, especially in PvP when you're trying to knock back uh, a juggernaut or someone that's on you. The second legendary utility is Curative Agent. Now this allows your countermeasures to heal you for 1% of your maximum health every second for 10 seconds and grants Curative Agent, causing your next Colto Probe to immediately grant 2 stacks of Colto Probe. In addition, Colto Infusion heals for more initially but no longer has a heal over time component. So obviously this is really improving the operative's uh, defensive capabilities. Countermeasures will heal you for 1% of your max health for 10 seconds, meaning it's basically going to bump you up 10% of your health. It will also allow your Colto Probe to grant 2 stacks immediately, which saves you a galactic cooldown. And finally, Colto Infusion will just be basically like another mini med pack. It just instantly heals you instead of having this heal over time component that is pretty useless overall. I have played lethal Lethality Operatives before, and that basically gives you, you know, a, a, a Colto Infusion every time you use Exfiltrate. And I found Colto Infusions to, on the whole, be pretty useless, and the heal over time ability doesn't really help that much. The final legendary utility is Blow for Blow. Now this allows your invasion to reflect 150% of single target tech and force damage back to the attacker while evasion is active. The damage is taken and reflected but not absorbed. So obviously evasion everyone knows that's like the 3 second invincibility for operatives and, um, and snipers. And now what this basically does is allows you to also reflect damage kind of like the saber reflectability for juggernauts. And this is another trend you're going to see throughout the changes which is that a lot of um, of classes are getting a reflectability. Sorcerers are also getting one and uh, assassins are getting one as well. So basically they allow you to reflect damage so now juggernauts are not going to have that exclusive saber reflectability because as of right now juggernauts are the only class that, that can reflect damage but a lot of the classes are going to be getting it after patch 5.0. Alright let's move on to the sniper. 
So the sniper, uh, what they said here is the sniper will see several changes that reinforces its position as the Old Republic's quintessential ranged damage dealer, so making it a lot more range heavy. Uh, slightly longer range stun, utilities that improve their chase and retreat capabilities, the sniper is posed to handle more combat situations than ever before, and then these are some of the changes. And one thing you'll notice, especially when you go into the mercenary changes, is with a lot of these range classes, they're trying to increase their survivability. Because snipers and mercenaries are not very viable, especially in ranked PvP, because because of their low survivability, they always get focused first, people try to burn them down really quickly. And so these types of new changes that are coming are definitely trying to help their survivability so people play them more. Now the, the, um, the snipers are getting one new ability called Maim. Now this isn't really a new ability, it just replaces Debilitate. It allows you to stun a target from 10 meters away. So obviously increasing the snipers range ability, allowing they don't have to be in the range of 4 meters to stun a target, now they can do it from far away and Shiv and Overload Shot are removed from the base class, they are now only Operative Exclusive. So once again, turning that on its head, right? All the melee classes are losing their ranged abilities, and all the ranged classes are losing their melee abilities. Uh, now in terms of the three legendary utilities for snipers, the f or actually there's four legendary utilities. Um, the first one is Controlled Chaos, which is Diversion grants a charge of Controlled Chaos for every target initially affected beyond the first each, char each charge increases armor penetration by 10%. This effect lasts for 8 seconds. Uh, the second utility is Defensive Safeguard. So when Ballistic Shield is activated, you gain a charge of Defensive Safeguards for each enemy inside your Ballistic Shield up to 4. This effect lasts 20 seconds and each charge increases your damage reduction by 5%. In addition, while inside your Ballistic Shield, you heal for 3% of your maximum health every second and you are immune to being pulled or knocked back. So once again, we're seeing that increase the survivability of snipers. But also, I like this, that you know, since the Ballistic Shield is more of a defensive cooldown for other people because when people are in the shield, they ha have their damage reduction increased. Well, this is nice because now snipers are being basically rewarded for helping out their team. Thirdly, snipers are getting Executioner, which is Flashbang and Maim Grand Executioner, allowing your takedown within 10 seconds to be used regardless of the target's remaining health and deal 15% additional damage. So it's really helping snipers get that, um, you know, if the target's basically really close to dying, it's going to help the snipers get that edge and really finish them off. Finally, snipers will be getting Tactical Retreat. Covered Escape heals you for 10% of your maximum health. Additionally, the duration of evasion is increased by 2 seconds. So, as I said before, just trying to increase the survivability of snipers, make them more viable in a lot of PvP scenarios. Okay, going on to the Sith Warrior. Now, Juggernauts are getting a new ability called Hue. Now, this uh, ability is only for the Vengeance Discipline. It replaces Vicious Throw, and it has a 30 meter range. So right now, the Vicious Throw is only usable in like 10 meters, I think, but now it's usable from 30 meters. So that's pretty awesome. They have both. So now Juggernauts are going to have both Saber Throw and um, and Hue. A guard no longer has any form restricting its use, meaning guard can be used by any, um, what do you call it, discipline. It's going to be pretty weird seeing like Vengeance Juggernauts and Rage Juggernauts be able to use guard, but it does increase their utility in PvP scenarios because they now don't have to be in tank stance in order to help out a, a player who's getting focused or something. Finally, probably one of the coolest things, Ravage is now instantly activated ability. So this is definitely going to be increasing the mobility of both Juggernauts and Marauders. However, it's also going to uh, affect the animation, so I'm not sure how that's going to work. They're probably going to have to change the animation, and that's unfortunate because Ravage, uh, and especially Blade Dance, which is the for this um, Jedi Knights and um, Jedi Sentinels, is just one of the nicest abilities uh, animations in the game. So it's unfortunate that that's no longer going to be there, but whatever. Uh, Juggernauts are getting three new legendary utilities. The first one is called Piercing Chill. Chilling Scream pierces enemies with an aching chill, dealing additional elemental damage to all affected targets over 8 seconds. Additionally, Chilling Scream grants chilling speed, increasing your movement speed by 35% for 8 seconds. Now, I play Juggernaut a lot, and I've almost never used Chilling Scream. I just don't use it at all. It's pretty useless for me, and I don't have a hard time keeping on my enemies. I don't need to slow them down that much. So this is definitely going to make Chilling Scream a lot more useful, and probably a lot of players are going to use it more. Secondly, Juggernauts are getting Extending Roar. Now, this increases the range of Force Scream to 30 meters, but Force Scream deals reduced damage beyond 10 meters. Additionally, Force Push deals 20% more damage and grants Extending Roar, allowing your next Force Scream to deal full damage regardless of the distance from the target. And this is a very interesting utility because it's going back on the trend that I, that I um, noticed initially, which is that, you know, they're not trying to give melee classes ranged abilities, but it seems as though Juggernauts are getting ranged abilities. Hue is, is usable 
vulnerable from 30 meter range and now you're able to also use your force scream in 30 meter range but um, but it does do reduced damage and stuff but that's pretty interesting I'm not sure why they decided to give juggernauts more range abilities and take it away from other um, other things like the operative finally juggernauts are getting reckoning after using intercede your next melee ability deals 20 percent additional damage so similar to the sniper it's nice to see that uh, that um, players who use these types of abilities that help out other players also kind of get rewarded for it so for example snipers when they pop their ballistic shield they're getting healed and when um, juggernauts intercede to help out another player and increase their damage reduction in turn they're also going to get an, a damage boost all right secondly we have the marauders now I do apologize, I'm just not proficient with the Marauder class at all, I almost I have never played it really. And so I'm just going to kind of read the stuff out and um, and for those of you guys who are who play Marauders, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. So Ravage once again is an instantly activated ability, uh, add, adds more mobility to the Marauder. Uh, they're getting a new ability called Gore, which is for the Carnage Discipline. And this is a high damage ability that hinders the movement of your enemy and reduces their armor. Now. The, they're getting three new legendary utilities. The first one is called Ruthless Aggressor, which Vicious Throw refunds two rage on targets affected by your Obfuscate. Additionally, Vicious Throw is usable on targets affected by your Obfuscate. I don't know if I'm not pr pronouncing that right. Obfuscate. Uh, regardless of remaining health, Obfuscate also grants Ruthless Aggressor, increasing force and tech defense by 75% for 6 seconds. Secondly, they're getting Hidden Savagery. While Force Camouflage is active, you gain a charge of Hidden Savagery every 0.5 seconds. Each charge of hit Hidden Savagery increases the damage dealt by your next melee attack by 4%. The stacks up to 12 charges and lasts for up to 6 seconds after exiting Force Camouflage. Finally, Interloper. Force Charge grants Interloper, allowing you to activate Force Charge a second time. Interloper lasts up to 7.5 seconds and it if is removed if Force Charge is reused. If Interloper is not utilized by the end of its duration, Force Charge is placed on a 7.5 second cooldown. Additionally, Force Charge now builds to Fury. So those are very interesting abilities. I definitely noticed that the Force Camouflage one is pretty cool because that's going to allow for the Marauders to integrate that into their... Um, rotations because it is going to give a pretty significant damage boost. It's 4% damage boost every 0.5 seconds. Alright, on to the Sith Inquisitor and the Sith Assassin. So for the Sorcerers, um, Phase Walk is removed from the base class and it's just Sorcerer exclusive. And that's very interesting because Phase Walk was introduced in the game exclusive to Assassins and then they made it uh, allowed, allowed Phase Walk to be used by both classes and now they're removing it from the Assassins which is who they initially gave it to. I'm not sure what the... Um, uh, logic is behind that because I think phase walk is a very assassin like ability I don't see why um, uh, or sorcerers should have access to it but whatever it is just going to be allowed for the sorcerers crushing darkness is also removed from the base classes and is now sorcerer exclusive force lightning is removed from the base classes once again now sorcerer exclusive and thrash is removed from the base class and is now assassin exclusive so three of the abilities that were allowed for all Sith inquisitors are now just going to be allowed for sorcerers and Thrash, which is almost never used by any sorcerer, is just going to be given to the assassins. Um, so sorcerers are getting three new legendary utilities. The first one is called Galvanizing Cleanse. Now, Expunge grants Galvanizing Cleanse, making your next ability with an activation time activate instantly. The effect cannot occur more than once every 30 seconds and lasts up to lasts for up to 15 seconds. Now, that's a pretty awesome utility because um, Expunge not only allows you to obviously remove uh, you know dots that are on you and stuff you can also use it in a lot of cases for example to get an insta cast on your uh, crushing darkness and stuff like that secondly sorcerers are getting a natural vigor which is unnatural preservation increases damage reduction by 15 percent for six seconds reduces the cooldown of unnatural preservation by five seconds so allowing them to have some more survivability thirdly enfeebling strike Strikes a target with your lightsaber, dealing weapon damage and immobilizing it for 3 seconds. When the immobilization effect ends, the target is slowed by 50% for 6 seconds. It replaces Saber Strike and it's on a 15 second cooldown. That's a very, very uh, unique ability. I honestly thought that was going to be going to the Assassins, but it seems as though Sorcerers are getting um, an ability that actually uses their lightsabers. And uh, it's on a 15 second cooldown. That's really interesting because Saber Strike is obviously meant to be one of those abilities that has no cooldown. Like you can just spam it all you want and um, no Sorcerer in their right mind would ever even use their lightsaber because um, they're, too busy, they're too busy using their ranged abilities, obviously. And so it's interesting that they're getting that ability. It's going to be cool to see how that plays out. In terms of assassins, 
uh, since so many abilities got removed from them, like they're losing Force Lightning, Crushing Darkness, uh, they're going to be getting some new abilities. But firstly, Thrash is now going to be granted at level 1, and it is Assassin exclusive. Uh, Lightning Charge is now a passive buff, and this is something that's going to be applying for all the classes that right now you have stances that you can enter well those stances are now going to be passives and you don't get to choose if you join a certain discipline like for example if i choose vengeance i'm going to automatically get the xian form i'm not going to be able to choose um you know maybe i want to switch to sarisu or something that's not going to be allowed obviously guard is now available at level 16 and no longer requires you to be in tank stance a dark charge is removed from the advanced class and now granted as a discipline passive Phase Walk is removed from the base class, once again it's just going to be Sorcerer exclusive and they are getting a new ability called Reaping Strike. Now this is a new ability for the Deception Discipline only, it's a high damage single target skill on a 15 second cooldown that is usable from stealth or within 15 seconds of landing a critical hit. So it's similar to kind of like their Assassinate ability which is their under 30% execution, it's just an ability that deals a ton, ton of damage but it has to be used in a certain scenario, like if you're in stealth or if you've just dealt a critical hit. Uh, they're getting three new legendary utilities. The first one is called Reaper's Rush. Phantom Stride grants Reaper's Rush, allowing your next assassinate to be used on any target regardless of remaining health. Reaper's Rush lasts for 10 seconds. Additionally, if the target of your Phantom Stride is killed within 10 seconds of using Phantom Stride, the cooldown of Phantom Stride is reset. So this is going to allow assassins to kind of just jump to a target, assassinate them quickly, jump to another target, assassinate them quickly. Ideally, that would be what happens. I'm not sure whether that scenario actually even exists in like PvP or something. But um, nonetheless, it's pretty cool. Secondly, they're getting Renewing Darkness. So when entering stealth with Force Cloak, you generate a stack of Renewing Darkness, which heals you for 4% of your maximum health every 2 seconds for 10 seconds. Um, stacks up... Stacks last for 6 seconds. When stealth is broken, each stack of Renewing Darkness heals you for 4% of your health. So that's going to be a pretty big heal. Uh, right up the, right up from the bat, you're going to get 20% of a heal after the 10 seconds is over. And then when, even if stealth is broken, you're still going to get some nice little boost to your health. So that should help out with Assassin's survivability. Finally, Retaliatory Grip. This is what I was talking about earlier, where Deflection is going to grant uh, you retaliatory grip reflecting 50% or 100% if you're in the darkness discipline of all direct single target tech and force damage back to the attacker for 12 seconds but it will not absorb incoming damage so that, is, that doesn't mean you're not going to be taking damage you're just going to be reflecting a ton of it back at them and um, and that's definitely going to help out with um, with dealing damage to your enemies so that's pretty cool that um, that some of these uh, classes are getting these reflect abilities, and it wasn't mentioned in the sorcerer class changes, but I do I did do remember reading in the data mine information that sorcerers are getting like a buff to their um, to their static barrier, or maybe it's a utility uh, in the heroic tier or something, which allows you your static barrier to reflect damage as well. So a lot of classes are getting this reflect ability. All right, finally we're going we're going to the bounty hunters and the troopers. So in terms of the bounty hunters, let's start with the power tech. So they're getting Deadly Onslaught. Now this is a new ability exclusive to Power Techs. It will replace Death from Above, which is now going to be exclusive for Mercenaries. Uh, they also get a new ability called Searing Wave, which is once again exclusive to Power Techs, and it replaces Flamethrowers, which is actually being removed from the game. Uh, that's pretty interesting. I would think that they would just make flamethrowers exclusive to mercenaries, but it says here it's actually being removed from the game. Uh, thirdly, Shatter Slug, which is a new ability, once again, exclusive to Power Techs. It's going to replace Explosive Dart, which is exclusive to mercenaries. So each, um, so they're getting three new legendary utilities. Firstly, Reel and Rattle. So Grapple will now actually deal kinetic damage to the target that it pulls. It will cause your next Rocket Punch or Flaming Fifth fist to deal 20% more damage and actually stun the target for 1.5 seconds. Now I think every single power tech uses that combo where they grapple someone, pull them to them and then use their uh, flaming fist or their jetpack strike. And so this is going to be pretty awesome because it gives you not only a damage boost, it even allows you to stun your target. So power techs are once again going to be a pretty nice class to play in PvP. Secondly, Mutilating Shards. Shatter Slug reduces the movement speed of all affected targets by 75% for 15 seconds, and this effect can only occur once every 30 seconds. Thirdly, they're getting Pressure Overrides. Explo explosive Fuel grants Pressure Overrides, which increases the maximum range of Flame Burst, Magnetic bat Blast, and Shatter Slug, Ordnance Onslaught, Ordnance Onslaught, Heat Blast, Energy Burst, Immolate, and Scorch by 20 meters for 15 seconds. So that's going to help um, 
power attacks with some ranged abilities if they want it, but I don't think that's going to be particularly useful because power attack is obviously meant to be a melee class and a lot of people play it as a melee class. So that's pretty awesome, the power attacks are getting a ton of new abilities, but um, let's go into the mercenaries and see if they're getting any love. And as I mentioned earlier, mercenaries are going to get tons of new survivability stuff. And so that's pretty cool because I think mercs are pretty squishy. I love playing merc, but I hate getting focused all the time and having assassins come on me and just kill me in like 10 seconds. So it's going to be nice to have some uh, tricks up my sleeve that will allow me to survive. So they're getting responsive safeguards, which is a new ability exclusive to mercenaries. It absorbs all single target damage, reflects 50% of it, and heals you for 5% of your health each time an attack is absorbed. So there's three things at play here. Firstly, you're absorbing damage, which is pretty awesome. Secondly, you have that aspect of it being reflected. And thirdly, you also get a heal on your overall health. So it heals you for 5% every time an attack is absorbed. And, um, and this is basically... OP, especially when you uh, compare it to some of the other classes. For example, other classes have a reflect, like the assassins and the operatives, however, uh, they don't absorb the damage, they just reflect it. Mercenaries are able to absorb it. And not only that, but they get an overall heal to their health bar. They're getting three new legendary utilities. Firstly, Tag and Bag, which is hindering a target with Electronet grants Tag and Bag, increasing your alacrity by 15% for 9 seconds. Additionally, activating Supercharge Gas reduces the cooldown of Colto Overload by 5 seconds. So that's pretty awesome, definitely c contributing to that survivability with a reduced cooldown of Colto Overload. And a lot of people are constantly using their uh, Supercharged Gas, so that's going to be pretty awesome. Secondly, Trauma Regulators. While Energy Shield is active, you generate a stack of Trauma Regulators each time you receive direct damage. Stacks up to 15 times. When Energy Shield expires, each stack of Trauma Regulators instantly heals you for 5% of your maximum health. And thirdly, Battlefield Protocols. Stealth Scan grants Battlefield Protocols, increasing the damage or healing dealt by your next non-channeled direct damage or healing ability by 20%. For each target revealed from stealth, you generate an additional charge of battlefield protocols. This effect stacks up to 5 charges and lasts for 10 seconds. So as we can see here, almost all of the abilities and utilities for the mercenary are aimed at somehow increasing their survivability. So I think mercenaries are going to be the next new OP class when patch 5.0 hits because they already have some amazing damage capabilities and now they're having some amazing healing capabilities as well. It's going to be pretty interesting to see how that plays out, especially in PvP scenarios. And thirdly, once again you see these dominant trends, and especially with the mercenary as we just read, um, once again they're being rewarded for helping out their team. So when they reveal enemies in stealth, they get a, da a, a boost to both their damage and their healing. And so these classes who have these abilities like Stealth Scan, like Ballistic Shield for the Snipers, that are meant to help out their team, whether they're in PvE or PvP scenarios, now they're kind of being rewarded for it by, by getting like a damage boost or, or a, um, a boost to their healing. And that's pretty, um, that's pretty good on Bioware's part. I think these are overall pretty good class changes, and that does end the video. But... Um, uh, there is more to come, I can say that much. Like There are a lot of more class changes and a lot more things that they need to discuss. I'm not sure why this was so limited in its scope because we all know that there's way more information with all the stuff that was data mined. But hopefully we're going to be getting that information soon and uh, we'll see some more posts and blogs posted. Anyways, I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. I do hope you guys found it informative. I'll see you in the next one.